It's getting late, and I'm missing my soaps. Hey, Max Scoville here for Rev3 Games, and I'm here to talk to you guys about Fuse. Now, Fuse was first announced a couple years ago at E3, and it was called Overstrike, and since then, it's undergone some sort of pretty massive changes, and it comes out this week, and now it's called Fuse. Let's take a look. Fuse is the latest release from Insomniac Games, the studio behind such beloved series as Spyro the Dragon, Ratchet and Clank, and Resistance. And in addition to marking the first time the studio has released a game on a non-Sony console, Fuse is also the first time Insomniac has had EA as a publisher, as well as the first IP Insomniac will own for themselves. Fuse is a co-op shooter that revolves around four members of the Overstrike 9 team, Dalton, Izzy, Jacob, and Naya, as they try to stop the evil organization Raven from doing typical evil organization type of stuff. I think you're lying. Raven has stolen a bunch of weaponry powered by a mysterious alien substance called Fuse, which makes them a formidable threat while they do bad, evil things. But luckily, the Overstrike team steals some Fuse weapons of their own. Xenotype weapons unlocked. Whether or not you're playing Fuse with anyone else, all four characters will always be on screen. So even if you're playing the game solo, you're still going to have a full squad. Any characters who are being controlled by AI can be switched into by holding back and hitting the appropriate face button. This adds a little bit of strategy, but mostly it just keeps things interesting by allowing for some variety in who you're playing as. Each character has a unique weapon that defines his or her playstyle. Dalton has the mag shield, which projects a large force field in front of him, big enough to protect the whole team, and which also absorbs energy from incoming attacks, which it can then hurl back at enemies, liquefying them in the process. Jacob's weapon is the arc shot, which is basically a crossbow with a sniper scope that shoots bolts and will pin enemies to walls. Izzy's weapon is the shatter gun, which crystallizes enemies in fuse, and then they explode like shrapnel when they're hit. Finally, Naya has the warp gun, which coats enemies in fuse, until eventually sucking them into another dimension, leaving shockwaves in their place, which will hit other enemies, causing damage. In addition to the four fuse weapons, each character can carry a second weapon and a sidearm, all of which are pretty standard guns with cool sounding names. Insomniac is a company known for really imaginative weapons, so the selection is a little bit disappointing. I fell on my gun. All of the fuse weapons are upgradable with skill points granted whenever a character levels up, and experience is doled out for every enemy killed, with bonuses being awarded for creative teamwork. Some of the weapon upgrades are pretty cool, like Jacob being able to detonate his arc shot bolts, though there are a lot of boring ones there too, like giving you a 2% higher chance of a critical hit. Not very exciting. I hate people. Mechanically, fuse is pretty sound, everything works, and sometimes it's enjoyable in the process. The shooting feels good with the fuse weapons, though the regular guns don't feel like they pack too much of a punch. The cover system works well enough without doing anything interesting. Graphically, the game has a passable amount of polish, and aesthetically, it's pretty inoffensive, though nothing's particularly exciting to look at. There are sections of the game that require climbing, which feels completely pointless and out of place, without actually being frustrating. And then there are areas that can be played stealthily, though they're all pretty optional, and there's really no penalty for just killing everybody. There are five chapters in the campaign, each in a different locale, but the vast majority of the gameplay is really nothing more than running from point A to point B and shooting all the dudes in between, occasionally stopping to hit a switch, get in an elevator, or climb a wall. The difficulty is relatively well balanced, aside from a couple boss attacks that involve one-hit kills. As a video game, Fuse is fairly competent across the board. My big problem with Fuse is that it's one of the most generic feeling games I've played in quite some time. The four characters periodically chime in with some surprisingly sharp one-liners, I love it when he states the obvious. But everything that takes place between those one-liners is astoundingly mediocre. The game has a plot, though it might as well be an action movie themed Mad Libs, while the blanks are filled in with the words Fuse or Raven or Overstrike 9, and ham-fisted attempts are made at delving into each character's backstory, but barely any effort is made to make those characters appealing in the first place, so most of the story just feels like mediocre fluff. In addition to the campaign mode, there's also echelon mode, which is sort of like horde mode with a few little nods to Smash TV. Surprisingly enough, I enjoyed echelon mode more than the campaign, simply because it wasn't trying to pretend it was anything more than a silly arcade shooter. Although that's a bit redundant, considering that the core campaign gameplay really isn't much more than killing off wave after wave of enemy while running between checkpoints. Fuse is definitely a game made to be played with friends. In addition to four-player online co-op, there's also local two-player. The game becomes a much more enjoyable experience once it's a social activity with people whose company you enjoy. But the same can be said about just about anything else, whether it's throwing around a frisbee, riding a bus, or even doing your laundry. The big question is, does Fuse offer enough entertainment to justify you and three friends each dropping 60 bucks on it? We need to move, now! 
At one point in time, Fuse was a game I was excited for, but that was back when it was called Overstrike and looked like Pixar's take on G.I. Joe, a real American hero. Going into Fuse, I tried to keep my expectations in check, but what I played felt much more like a product that's crossing off a checklist of what a focus group said they wanted out of a video game. Fuse feels like EA's attempt to capture the cooperative, offbeat fun of Borderlands without scaring anyone away by getting too goofy, or like a more fleshed out version of Mass Effect 3's multiplayer without any of the customization or Mass Effect lore. If Fuse had dared to get a little bit weirder, it could have been a really great game, but instead the most exceptional thing about it is how unexceptional it is in spite of the fact that clearly a lot of work went into it. Once again, Fuse is a totally competent and functional game. It is exactly one video game, and I'm sure that somebody out there is going to enjoy it, but I just don't think you'll be missing much if you skip this one. Fuse gets a 3 out of 5. Guys, if it's not too much trouble... So yeah, Fuse, kind of a disappointment. If you guys have any questions about it, be sure to leave them in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer any of that. Also on Twitter, I'm Max Scoville on there. You guys can check out the rest of our gaming coverage right here on Rev3 Games. Take it easy.